Yeah. Hey, uh, welcome back. Day two. We got some great stuff. I want to try to make it through uh, variables, constants, and memory addresses today. A lot of this stuff is just informational, kind of how Go Go works, and um, and uh, it's really well laid out in the presentations. So I'll just sort of skip through those as, when we get to it, and you know we can definitely stop and talk about a few things, you know, but. Uh, I want to move a little bit more quickly through those. That way, you guys this weekend will be able to start writing Go code. Um, so that, that's the plan. So obviously, if you like don't get something, please, please, please ask. Absolutely, keep it a dialogue. And uh, but also, if it's uh, if it's even a little quick, well, you know, just think about it. I'm like exposing myself right now. Maybe just getting a first take on something. Then I'll sit with it over the weekend. Then you can come back on Tuesday and be like, okay, what's this mean? What's that mean? Once you look at it over the weekend a little bit more. But let's start out today just with Q&A. So Nina had a question, and her question was, uh, hey, when I use the go run command, right? When I use the go run command, do I have to be in the folder where my code is? So for instance, like let's say here's hello world, right? And so I could bring up my terminal right there, and right now my terminal, um, I'll do my larger terminal. So right now my terminal, I could do pwd, print working directory. And I can see, okay, there, there I'm at. I could do ls to list things, or ls space dash la to list all. And then that gives me a more vertical list. And I could see, okay, what, what you know, are my directory options? What can I go into? And uh, I want to go into my Go workspace, so for me, I have to change into documents. And then when I'm in documents, I called my Go workspace Go, right? So I do CD Go, but I can't hit Tab because I've got Go, Go Books, Go Blueprints. It doesn't know which one I want, so it doesn't autocomplete. So I just have to add a little slash there manually myself. And now I'm inside my workspace. And what am I going to see when I run? this command right there. What am I going to see when I run LSLA inside my workspace? What's that going to show me? Oh, three folders. Three folders. And that's the way the workspace has to be set up. It has to be bin, source, and package, package right? Package, bin, source. So those are, there's my bin, my package, and my source. And uh, where do I keep all of my code? Yeah, so source. And what, what's package, what's bin for? What's bin short for? What's it stand for? Binary. Binary. So that's where my binary executables will be once I run them. And then my packages will be as I write code or you get packages or libraries from other people, um, you know, and I, uh, I compile those to use them. It'll drop the packages in there because they won't have a main function. And so it's not going to be a standalone executable, but it can be binary code that Go will use, right? And it can just already be compiled, and it gets compiled into something with a .a file. That's the file extension. So it's, you know, we're, we're going to talk about that today. So I'm going to change directory into source, and then I'm going to go into GitHub, and then I'm going to go into my username. And why do we have this naming convention of GitHub forward slash username in the source folder? Did we talk about that at all Tuesday? To make every package uh, unique? Yeah, so we're making every package unique. It's namespacing. And so, you know, nobody else is going to have, there, there could be a thousand Hello World packages out there on the internet, right? And, uh, but nobody else will have the Hello World package, uh, github.com forward slash goes to 11, <laughs> right? Because that's mine, right? There might be a github.com forward slash Rio Waller forward slash hello. And that'll be her namespace. So namespacing in, in computers allows us, when we're sharing code and files, allows us to have unique names. Just sort of like, you know, we have namespacing as humans. So, you know, if I, uh, if I say, like right now in one of my classes, I have two students with the exact same first and last name. It's confusing. Usually we don't have that conflict, you know. I have to look to their middle initial to differentiate them or their student ID, you know. So we, so we want things to have unique names. So I go into there, and then I go into my, uh, what's this called? I don't remember, ls-la, and it's called Golang Training. So I'm going to change, oh, I got it. There we go. Change into uh, Golang Training. 
and uh, and then I look inside there and I've got O1 hello world so if I just ran go run right here and I don't know what, what what's what's going on but if I change directories into O1 hello world and then list what's in there there's my first file so I do go run and first file and uh, and it should print out hello world so it's, it's just spooling up if I was to run that again it run much quicker so that pause was like, oh, getting go started. Okay, now I'm, I'm going and I could run those files fast. And so Nina's question was like, hey, do I have to be in the folder where, uh, you know, the code is to run, um, you know, uh, to run uh, whatever the file, the executable. And uh, you just have to provide the path, right? So right now it knows the path is this file, this folder. It looks right in the folder I'm in. Right, but I could be, I could be, let's just test this out. So what, what is the, the path there? There's the path, right? Crazy path. And control T to get a new tab up. So I'm, now I'm in uh, change directories, you know, I'm, I'm all the way here. What about if I do go run that? What do you think? I don't know. It's, you know, this is how I've learned Go. A lot of it is like, what will happen? <laughs> I'm having that moment right now because <laughs> I've never actually done this. I don't or think. You just have to put um, you no go file files name. listed. What's that? You have to put that file name. What if you just oh slash. hello go? What if you just do a slash? Right no, there it's we go. The first, it's yeah. Oh the file name. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, control C that and mm -hmm. Control K and then and then forward slash first file dot go. Is that the name of it? So. Hello world. Thank you, Carson. Awesome. I, I learned this over the summer, too, how to use cool. Bash. Well, a little bit less. Mostly. Yeah, uh, thank you. And I love the group, you, you know, troubleshooting. I mean, that's what's awesome about Stack Overflow, Mini Minds, right? Like, I'm not naming the file, but you guys help. So what about, here's, here's something else, and it's just a little bit out of order. It just kind of keeps in with Nina's question. So we've learned, before I do that, though, um, we could look at the docs for uh, how does how does the go run work? Where would we look to find information about go run? Like what would be your... type in go run dash or in the in the terminal go run. Okay. That's what I do is go, go run, run dash 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 h. Go run dash h. Wow, that's awesome. I've never done that. It works for pretty much any command. So go run dash, so run, build flags, run compiles and runs the main package comprising the named go source files. Go source file is defined to be a file ending in a literal dot go suffix. By default, go run runs the compiled binary directly. And, but if we look at the usage up here, we have, we have run and then build flags and then x and then go files and then arguments. And the dot dot dot, what's that mean like in our language in English? What's dot 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 mean? I suppose it means you could put multiple Go files in there and it yeah. would compile them. Yeah, so in our language, if I'm like, and then, you know, we went to the party and there was 50 kegs, dot dot dot. And the rest of the story. Right? It, it's like, okay, there's a lot more to that story there, right? That's what dot 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 means. And so in Go, dot 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 means more stuff can go here, right? That's kind of cool, you know, that they use that syntax, which in our language kind of means more stuff goes here and up there. We're using the same syntax. Go files, dot, dot, dot. You can put a go file, another go file, another go file. I've never used multiple go, go run on multiple files at once, but there might be some instances where, like, maybe go build or go install. Let me build or install these multiple files all at once, and you'd use multiple files all at once. So that's a, that's a great way to look it up. Are there other ways? Go run dash h. How else might we look up the go run command? Were we looking at anything Tuesday that would help us look up the go run command? What comes to mind for you? Let's just try things. There's no right or wrong answer. It's just like an idea. Go try help. it go and see what happens. So let's try go help. And if I type in go help. It's the same as dash h. Actually. Is it the same as dash h? But now you're getting the go, go in general, not just go run. Yeah, and so here we have this thing, go help, and we could use go help command right here, right, where we supply it with a command, and give me one command. So I type in the terminal go help, and then some command, give me the name of one command. Rock 
clean. Clean. Right there, right? These are all my commands. Give me the name of another command. Get. Get. Give me the name of another command. Test. Test. And right above test is run. Right? So we could do go help run. We just looked at that. Thing. Uh, same thing. Yeah. Okay? But this is the way we were looking at how to get there that day. But you could also do go run dash h. And that's just a more built in to Unix thing. Kind of works in a lot of different things. Do, 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 do. All right, so go uh, help. And not only do we have the go help command, but we also have the go help topic. And so I just want, one of the things I really want to do is lay the foundation. Like, how do I, how do I actually work with all the tools in Go? What are the tools? And, and how do I find answers? And what's the difference between this website and that website and doing it at the terminal? Like, when we're looking for help, we've got Go Help. And then we have GoDoc.org. And then we have GoLang.org. And then we have a GoDoc at the terminal. And in some instances, GoDoc at the terminal, GoLang.org, and GoDoc.org are all going to show you the same thing. It's like, what? So what's, what, where should I be looking and why? Right, so just so you understand sort of like, hey, when I'm learning Go and I hit something and I need to go find the answer, where do I start looking, how do I, how do I look, how do I read the documentation? Because to me that was a big stumbling block when I was first learning it. Good question, Nina. Anybody else have any questions from Tuesday? Yeah, there was a question about the textbook. So I'm going to cover resources today, learning resources. And, and uh, uh, I haven't found one absolutely definitive um, uh, resource like, man, this is awesome. This is the path. Chapter one, chapter two, exercises at the end. We're going to get through 15 chapters and look at what we did, right? And so I'm, I'm actually trying to help create that path. I found some resources which are very helpful better than others, and uh, some, some that aren't. And so that, that's presentation nine. You guys want to see some of that right now? Or you want to see all of it right now? How many people want to see all of presentation nine right now? Put, it, put your hands up if you want to see it. No, don't hesitate. All right, resources. So let's uh, restart this video because uh, just to chunk things up here, we'll start a new video for resources.